This edition of the Rockman Experience is brought to you by First Coast Nutrition and Supplements. It's your one-stop shop for keeping your body in optimum health. Get all the help you need right now at pmpnutrition.com. The Jacksonville Free Press newspaper, bringing positive news to North Florida for more than 30 years. JacksonvilleFreePress.com. And Edward Waters College. Enroll right now. EWC.edu. Edward Waters College, emerging eminence. It's time, one of the hottest podcasts in the country. You're inside the Rockman Experience. M-I-N-O-S-G-R-A-T. Yo, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Anthem. No, this ain't a game, plugging Madden. Got the daily news, what they have. Couple of interviews, a couple of things we asking. And experience the greatest teacher. As you experience the greatest teacher. A living testimony, really, truly make it deeper. And life a pretty penny, not as pretty when it's cheaper. This is for the culture. Never trying to get over. I know this world is getting colder. I ain't come here to roast ya, so it's what I told you. Rock men experience, Johnson experience. Oh man, you curious, breaking new serious. But we still laugh and smile, got them bad laughing now. Moving from the left to the right, like speakers panning now. Rock men experience, Johnson experience. Oh man, you curious, breaking new serious. But we still laugh and smile, got them bad laughing now. Moving from the left to the right, like speakers panning now. I can't do it for the vine, I just do it for the podcast. I said connected without Comcast. I make them stay like it's on task. I make them stay like it's on task. Keep going, keep rolling with it. So many episodes, and I let them know. A lot, a lot of things they ain't never know. But we gon' take our time with we'll forever glow. This the rock men experience, Jackson experience. Ah, uh, man, you curious? Ah, uh, man, they mad. Yeah, they furious. Ah, uh, man, they mad. <laughs> Cause they furious. Keep on rolling. Keep on going, go coast to coast, cause we keep on coasting. In my yuggy, yes, G R A N T. Got these flows in a smooth lion ocean. Move with the groove and I move with the tune. Vibe with the wave and I'm still showing praise. Got first family second, but tune in, tune in. Go ahead and we gon' do this. Do this. Rock men experience, Johnson experience. Oh man, you curious? Breaking new with serious, but we still laugh and smile. Got them bad laughing now. Moving from the left to the right, like speakers panning now. Rock men experience, Johnson experience. Oh man, you curious? Breaking new serious, but we still laugh and smile. Got them bad laughing now. Moving from the left to the right, like speakers out. Everybody, welcome to the experience. How are you? It has been way too long. That's right. This is the start of season two. I'm Rachman Johnson, and welcome to my experience. For those of you who don't know uh, about the show, or this is your first time tuning in, you got a whole season of episodes that you can go back and check out. But uh, my name is Rachman Johnson, and I'm the host of this show. I am a news anchor reporter by trade, uh, and... Did I just say uh and and? Hmm. Oh, well, <laughs> it's my show, so I can do what I want to do. Uh, but I spent uh, years in uh, doing marketing, strategic communications, um, television broadcasting, radio broadcasting, and uh, I'm currently a professor of communications and journalism at Edward Waters College in Jacksonville, Florida, which is really, really exciting. So for those of you who have been listeners to the podcast, my apologies for taking so long to get back to you. I appreciate all the notes and cards and emails and text messages and carrier pigeons and people stopping by and knocking on the door saying, where is the podcast? Well, it's back. Uh, the reason I took some time off um, from the show and from a lot of other things that I've been working on is the fact that my mother was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, it was a very hard thing, but it was a necessity for me to take time away so that I could be with her and and help her. And mom had gotten so much better. She had really gotten better. Things were really good for her. And uh, the cancer was in remission, we believed. And unfortunately, um, I don't like to use the term lost her battle because my mother didn't lose anything and I didn't lose her. She just transitioned but um, mother went, uh, she, she passed on um, a couple months ago. And so during the, the time, um, it was hard going back and forth to appointments and, and doctor visits and treatments and all of those things. But I am, uh, instead of, you know, I'm reminded of a Dr. Seuss quote that says, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. 
And that's something that I am doing and will continue to do to smile because I had her for as long as I did. So this show today is about grief. For some of you, you may have lost a parent. You may be mourning the end of a relationship. You could have lost a job, a friend, um, any of those things. But in those things, we experience grief. And and I'm going to talk about my experience. Uh, one of the first things I was told to do, and we'll talk about it a little more at the end of the show, uh, is that I needed to go to grief counseling, which I did. And it was okay. I'm not going to say anything about the grief counselor because it was okay. It just wasn't the thing for me. I get more therapy out of having conversations with you and talking about the beauty that was the relationship I had with my mother. So anyway, there's that. Uh, so much more, so much to discuss with you today. So hang loose and uh, the experience is back in full force. But first, the news. This is a huge week for the U.S. Supreme Court. Some major cases are being decided and Chief Justice John Roberts is in the hot seat. Now, even though he's been on the court for about 14 years with the recent new members, this is the first time that he's expected to be the deciding vote. And speaking of those Supreme Court cases, one directly involves the entertainment industry. It's a racial discrimination case against both Comcast and Charter Communications. Now, this case brought by Entertainment Studios alleges that cable systems, these two systems, agreed to broadcast other networks to their subscribers that were not as well known. And they skipped over Entertainment Studios because it's a black company. The other companies are not. It was started and run, Entertainment Studios that is, by host and comedian Byron Allen. Those cases start this week. In Chicago, there was a move to block the building of the Obama Presidential Library, but a judge dismissed the case. Although the library had been okayed by the city of Chicago, the group brought the lawsuit saying that the library would have an adverse environmental impact. Now, a judge did dismiss the case, even though the Obama Foundation wasn't specifically named in the lawsuit. Had the case gone forward, it could have halted plans for the more than half a billion dollar building. Well, now you're up to date. We'll be talking about grief in just moments as the Rockman experience continues. We'll be right back. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go, fish that. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. I'm a retired school psychologist and helping people was my thing. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. My name is Julius Gaines, creative writer, poet, photographer. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Rockman Experience, and we are in the midst of season two. What an epic time to get back together. And this show, of course, is something serious and special and fun all at the same time. Um, for those that don't know, for the last few months, I've been away from the Rockman experience. And some people have said, Rock, why are you away? Why aren't you here? Why haven't you been around? Well, um, my mother had been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And like Gilda Radner and other women before her, ovarian cancer is usually not uh, available to be seen before it reaches stage three or four. And it's a pretty uh, silent killer until it gets there. And unfortunately, it took my mother's life. And so during the time that I wasn't around, I was making sure that she had the best care that I could and giving her all the love that I could. And I miss her indeed terribly, but I'm glad she's not suffering anymore. So uh, joining me today in studio are two guys from Edward Waters College who are students and friends, and uh, they both experienced tragic losses recently in their family due to health-related issues. Miles um, Grant, who you heard earlier on the intro to the show, he wrapped that intro, and dude is bad. We're working on the intro and what it'll come out to, but that is what we got so far, and I hope you like it. Miles Grant's in the house. And uh, Miles recently lost his dad to a car accident um, not long ago. And uh, unfortunately, and we'll talk about the circumstances surrounding it, but he ended up in a medically induced coma. And uh, doctors and the family decided to take him off life support. 
and uh, Joshua Young, who's the president of Edward Waters College Student Government Association, lost his uncle to a battle with colon cancer, I believe it is. And um, he uh, didn't make it in hospice, I think only a few days in hospice, and then he uh, succumbed. So all three of us are dealing with issues of losing close relatives. And today, our show is going to be more focused on understanding how to cope and how to get through dealing with an issue like losing a loved one to an illness or an accident. So let's welcome uh, Josh and uh, Miles to the show. How you doing, guys? Ten and ten. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good to have you guys. And we don't want to make it a sad show. Obviously, all three of us recently lost relatives, and I'm sure this won't be my first time, ta- uh, my last time, rather, talking about it. Yeah. But uh, we'll start out with either one of you guys. What, 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 what was what was the experience like? Like, what was it like when you heard those words that that person isn't coming back? Um, it's an experience, it's an experience that I wouldn't wish on my own worst enemy. It's an experience that, that you're never going to be okay with. And you have to understand that it's real. It's, it's not a dream. It's real. And hearing those words is something, you know, you can try to push it off, but eventually it's going to break you if you don't deal with it. So like myself, I know I have to deal with it eventually. I've dealt with it partly, but hearing those words, it's just something you you never want to hear. What did your dad, um, you know, that was your dad's brother, his older brother. And uh, they they were very close all their lives. Like your your fa- entire family is close knit. And your, your uncle, for those that don't know, Bishop McKinley Young, former chairman of the board at Edward Waters College, AME Bishop, very well known and was a presiding prelate at the time that he passed away. Um, what was it like seeing your father, probably the strongest man that you know besides your uncle, buckle to that pressure? Like, how did your father, and and, how, and I don't want to say how did he cope, because it's something that you will always cope with. How is he coping? Uh, it's, it's hard, because he doesn't want to show me that side, but then again, I want to be here for him to cope, and... It's really hard. It's much harder on my father because two years ago, my aunt recently passed away. And now two years later, my uncle just passed away. So it's one of those things where it's just like, I just lost my big sister and I just lost my big brother. And he's the baby, so... It's like my time is coming. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so sad because it's like, it's only one... He has one of the brothers, so two of them left. And it's one of those questions that's now being asked, who's next? And though that question is in their heads, and it's like, I, it's nothing I can say, I can do, no amount of money, it's, who's next? What's going to happen to my children? What's going to happen once I leave the server? It's, it's a question that... That no one can answer. It's no, nobody can answer. Yeah, and it's a question we don't even want to think about, but inevitably no one can answer. And here's the thing, like with you, you were very close with your uncle, and you were so close to him seeing you, uh, you just... Joined Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Congratulations, being a new member of Alpha. And your uncle was very involved and active in Alpha Phi Alpha. Um, and I can only imagine how you felt him being just shy of seeing you walk across the burning sands. It's It was an ex- I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was something we talked about a lot in... Um, it's just one of those things where it it hurt really bad. It was a joyous occasion when I when I finally crossed those burning sands, but it was also a sad occasion because you know he wasn't there. He wasn't there, and he yeah. wanted to be there so bad. And yeah. um, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's just like you're happy and it's you're sad at the same time, and trying to find a way to put the emotions into words. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's really hard. Miles, let me ask you. So I know you got the call and we talked. Your dad uh, ended up in a car accident mm-hmm. that was um, the other driver's fault. Yeah. Yeah, what happened? What happened was there was somebody going northbound right across around Kings Road, and they ended up make, losing control and going to the other side of the highway. My dad was traveling southbound. He was about to merge over by I-10, a little bit after King's Road. Yeah. So right where I get off to every day to go to school, the um the lady, she she came all the way over it. Uh, she had missed her exit. It was trying to get over. Well, she lost control oh. because she was like in the fast lane, and she goes to the opposite lane. 
So Did, was going, anybody else hurt? Was she hurt or anybody else? She wasn't hurt. She wasn't hurt. The person who was in the SUV that eventually hit my dad, he's paralyzed from the neck down. Oh, man. And then the last car, I don't know what happened with the last car, but the lady who initially went from going northbound to southbound all the way to the other lane, she's fine. There was a kid in the car. There was a guy that she was with in the car, and they're okay. So, uh, And yeah, they immediately like flighted your dad to the hospital. Um, he he went through the process. They had to put him in a coma. Yes, sir. They put him. He was in a coma. They had to cut him out of the truck with the jaws of life, and they started working on him immediately. Instead of you know figuring out who he was, they just worked on him. And then when we came to the hospital, they, they we couldn't find him because they put him in as unknown, so they could just go ahead and work and on get him right away, taken care of. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, it's and and as we go through. This process, guys, how has it been? I mean, this is, you and I were just having conversations, uh, Miles, about your dad and advice he had given you and next steps in life. Yeah. How are you processing it? It's, that's a great question. I'm just trying to just take it one day at a time, you know? Like, everything that he said, every lesson that he taught me, whether I liked it or not, it, it really makes a lot of sense now. It's just now every time something happens, it's like, well, I wish I could talk to my dad about it because we were that close. Like I could talk to him about anything. Absolutely. At you know, at any time, it was a judgment free zone. But but now it's kind of like, I, I I really understand where he's coming from now. And it makes I wish, you grow up quick, doesn't it? Mad quick. <laughs> mad quick. Oh my word! Like like because it's crazy because a year ago I used to. The devil used to be messing with me about what you're going to do if you don't have your dad. And it's crazy. A year from now, he passed yeah, away. Yeah. And I thought I was tripping, but I guess that was something I needed to start preparing myself for. Yeah. So, And we get signs and omens all the time. I mean, I am much older than both of you. And my mother, however, I knew, knowing what I know about God and how life works, I knew my mother wouldn't be here forever. I did not think I, in my wildest dreams, that I would be experiencing this today. I, I, in my vision, thought my mother would have grandchildren and she'd be in her 90s like my grandmother was. And she'd be roaming around still bothering people and then she'd just sleep away one day. Never did I think that cancer would touch our family. Mind you, I just lost my dad two years ago from cancer. And so for me, I'm an only child. And I don't know how you guys look at it. And obviously, it's your uncle, so it's a little bit different for you. And then with your dad, you still have your mom. The The thing for me, man, it's – there are two feelings that have come about for me. I felt like – and talking about it is good. It helps yeah. us to really get through these things. Um, the thing about losing mom, I guess the first thing was I felt like an orphan. And everybody, you know, all, you know, of course, this is the time when, now y'all tell me if I'm wrong, we all fellas here, all the girls in the world going to call and be like, oh, didn't they do it, Josh? Didn't they do it? Didn't they all want to come? I heard about your uncle. Yeah. Am, I, am I right, Ken? Didn't they do that? Come on. Miles, you know. Of oh, all ages. Oh, yeah. of all ages, yeah. right. They all come rubbing and holding. And I'm like, <laughs> there's no, like, this is not the moment to awe and touch me and say, oh, I've always liked you. Like, I appreciate you want to be here, but... Right, like, get off me. Like, yeah. I just... Yeah. I just need my space. Yeah, I need to, I I need to just keep going. Do you, no, don't touch me. Uh, no, I'm not trying to marry you. I'm, you're not going to... I'm vulnerable, but I ain't stupid. <laughs> That's right, the difference. Right, right, right. Vulnerable, but not stupid. <laughs> um, so, for me, I felt, though, with all of the love that can come from all the various sources, I still felt like an orphan. Because that, you know, that's the person that I... That was my best friend. And before I got here, number one, this person's DNA, they are the per- they are the, the, the instrument that coded my DNA, right? That coded my DNA. And so by mom leaving, there was like this huge void that I know you guys love me. I love you guys. We're all cool. I know I have other family, cousins, and all those people that love me. But it's just different. There will be a void. There will always be a void for that. 
connection from that individual. It's just something about it that I didn't experience or know it would happen until it did happen. And so for me, I went from two emotions. One, I felt orphaned and like, it's just me now. And the second thing that was really interesting is, did it seem like to you that it really wasn't quite real? It like is. you were like, okay, somebody's going to call me and they were like, we're just joking, well, you know, or something like something to that effect. What, what, see what happened once, once everything start, once everything started to happen, we knew we had to, we knew we had to go ahead and fly to, um, get to my uncle, my brother and I, we knew we had to fly to go ahead and get to my uncle. And I called my aunt during, during my finals of the last semester, I called my aunt, Hey, look, I'm just, I'm trying to get my brain together. Is everything all right? She's like. Everything is good. Your uncle said he's good. He's fine. Take care of your finals. We'll see you during Christmas. Everything is good. And I'm like, okay, cool. Everything is great. That gave me the focus I needed. I was great. He was. He, we spoke to him on Christmas like she said we would. And he sounded strong. And everything was good. We talked about that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Everything was so good. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going into 20, 2019 great. My head is on straight. And then I got the call at work. I'm just like, Jesus. And once you get the call, once I got the call, I just knew I'm like, yeah, that's it. Like you going back in, and that's when everybody around the church, and you know, everybody around the church, around the school. Hey, I heard your uncle. I'm like, no, 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 my uncle's fine. My uncle's fine. Oh, he just had a cough. He's he's good. Because people good. heard before you knew that people, he had passed on. People heard, and somebody I got the calls. People started texting and calling me. They said, like, I'm so sorry, I couldn't make it. I'm just like, what you talking about? He's still alive. And that's when I called my dad, and he let me know. I'm just like. Everybody knew before you did, yeah. And it's one, it's one of those feelings that I can't, I don't know, it's, one, it's just one of those feelings that you, you're you never going to be able to cope with. And you're never, mm-hmm. it's one of those feelings that you just can't, that you can't explain. Can it same to you? Did it feel real? Did it feel like it was like a movie that wasn't, did it not, it, and even today, it's only been a couple weeks for both of us. It's been a little bit longer for you, Josh. For me, it still doesn't quite feel real. Nah, it doesn't feel real. It's it's real because he died in front of us, but it's it doesn't feel real. Ever since we got the phone call, it's not. Nah, it, this don't feel real right now that we even talking about it. Cause it's, that's your dad, and he was. I mean, he told me when he turned fifty, he prayed to God for fifty more years. And when he prayed, he believed in his prayers, and he believed that he was gonna live fifty more years. So I'm thinking like. I just can't. I can't believe he's gonna it. be a great granddad. You gonna be a granddad. Yeah, he gonna be a, yeah I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, my dad's gonna, like, my dad's gonna be the granddad that my grand. Because I lost my granddad in middle school, and we were like this. Yeah. So after I lost my granddad, me and my dad became like this. Yeah. So I was like, my dad is was basically starting to be that granddad for my niece, and then I got that phone call, and I was like, he's gonna survive this. Like he's like, I'm not in my head. I'm not thinking he's in a coma. I'm thinking like. He's going to survive this, and he's going to come back, and he's going to give a testimony that's going to change the world. Then my family, they started telling me, like, no, you're going to change the world. And as soon as they said that, I just started breaking down crying. Because you knew. And I was like, and then, like, he, 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 we had a conversation, and he was telling me, you know, I'm leaving, like, spiritually. And that same day he passed, that Wednesday, Wednesday after he got in an accident, and I was like, okay, that voice is actually real. They, then, they, they, they visit us. Yeah, all the time. They visit us. All yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to listen to that voice. I, I just, I know when, for me, uh, mom died in my arms. Um, I was there. We watched The Journey of Us, the movie. And I was, I was, uh, I'd given her breakfast in bed. And she was actually really good. She was fine. And we just had a great conversation. We were laughing and uh, we were about to go to church. And I got, she said, uh, I said, well, hey, I'm going to go get my clothes and I'll help help you get dressed. And she said, I feel weak. I feel a little weak. Because um, she was going, she can go to the bathroom by herself. She was, she was much better than she had been. And I helped her up. And we had this little system where we say one, two, and we get up on three together. And I did that. And, and she was holding me. And she looked at me. She just looked me dread, dead in the eye. And we got up. And on three, she was gone. And and I'm standing there holding her. And I knew she had gone, but I 
was like, mom, mom, you know, she just stopped responding and her legs had buckled and I was trying to get her to respond. And, um, you know, I did CPR, um, and the, the rescue was there in like literally 90 seconds or less. I mean, they were there very quickly. I, cause I called them instantly cause I couldn't, you know, um, get her to respond. And so I, I called them and I'm, I'm, I laid her down and I was doing CPR and nothing. And so they came and they came in and, uh, they did all their stuff. And, and so when I finally figured out and after I got all the business stuff taken care of, and trust me, there was, there's drama. I don't know if y'all had drama. I had drama. The police was like, uh, I'll tell you this before I tell you the, 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 the good stuff. I almost, I felt like I was in a, this could go really, really wrong moment. Um, the police obviously come with the rescue when they came. And I felt like I was in like a Black Lives Matter commercial or something. The police asked me to step away from the crime scene. And I'm saying, this is my mom's bedroom. This is not a crime scene. My mother is still warm. And you're already defiling her room by walking around it. And the police told me that I needed to leave the crime scene. And I told them, absolutely not. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving my mother. And and this, this, the, this is what the police said to me. And the police, um, when I told them, he raised his voice at me. So I raised my voice back and told him I wasn't going anywhere. He stepped back and put his hand on his gun. At that moment, I called um, our former president, um, Nat Glover. I called my state representative, Tracy Davis. I was calling other people, trying to see who I could get to get to the police department. To just, I mean, I, I just, but I shouldn't have had to do that while I was trying to process the fact that my mother had just died moments ago. And so that was my like initial introduction to this, besides being emotionally a wreck. And uh, once we got everything taken care of and I had to kind of let them know what they had we were dealing with. Um, yeah, because it, it, it ended, but I had to, you know, get a little strong. Once that was out of the way, uh, I went back in. And some people say, I don't know, what you guys tell me what you think about this. Some people think I was a little morbid for this, but um, some people are like, oh, you went back in there with the body? I'm like, that's not the body. That's my mama. That's not the body. And I went into the room. And I picked my mom up and I washed her um, because, you know, I wanted her to be presentable when she left the house. And I washed her very well. And when I was uh, in the Holy Land, I got some frankincense and myrrh oil. And um, after I bathed her, I rubbed her with frankincense and myrrh. And I dressed her. And I put her in bed. And I waited for the undertaker to come. And so... For me, it was a way, it was a cathartic moment and a way of of kind of my final salute because there's no more I could do. And granted, she had already gone to be with God. Um, but this was my final salute to her. Um, and the way I look at it is I was holding her while God grabbed her, right? And if we think about the power of God that we read about in the Bible and all these other holy books, you know, if I'm touching her while God touched her, then whatever God used to get her soul out of her body, some of that had to get on me. And and that means it's time for success. And and I'm, you know, so I don't know if you, to me it was like a magical moment, but it took a minute for me to get there. And even now, like I still am expecting someone to call and say, oh, mom's having a pedicure. Can you pick her up from the nail salon? But the call has never come. <laughs> So it's a, it's a, it's a unique, what are you, what are you guys doing to, when you have those moments, when you, are you speaking out to your dad and to your uncle? Like, do you, do you try to say stuff to them? Like, did you say, uncle, I made it. I'm, 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 I'm an alpha now. Or did you, you know, what, what are you doing to kind of find the way of dealing with the grief? Well, um, for me, after, after everything, I mean, I prayed, I'm like, I went, I went to my own little corner, so much going on, my brother's there, everybody's trying to call me, I'm just like, I just need like, I just need like 10 seconds, you know, my little brother's trying to say, what you need, but one of my brothers, he knew what was going on, he was like, give him his time, and it's just, hey, I did it, I'm I'm done, and it's just like, not, I don't know, it's just not being able to just physically, you know, have that conversation, you know, and my aunt, you know, she's very supportive and things like that. She's telling me, you know, he's proud. You did everything you said you were going to do. 
you made it to SJA president, you did Alpha, you know, everything we set out for you to do, you did, and you did, and beyond, so it's just, it's not a need for you to feel sad right now, so coping is just like, hey, I know what I did, I said everything I said I was going to do, so let me go ahead and finish the journey, let me go ahead and finish the job, I said I'm going to graduate, let me go ahead and graduate, let me make sure my father's okay, I call him every time, hey, if you need me to come home, you call me and let me know. Whatever's going on, if you need me to come home, you call me and let me know. I'm not, same thing for my other uncle. Hey, if you need me to come home, you call me let me know. You can text me. I'll be on the next plane, the next bus. I'll drive. Call me and let me know if you need me to come home. Don't wait. Just call me. I don't care if it's for 24 hours or 48. Just call me let me know. So I cope by just just having my own personal time, even if I'm in a shower. I mean, for me, the shower is the best time for me to cope and think about life because it's just me the water and that's it I don't have to think about anything else it's just that's it so that's that's nice. how I cope you nice know? nice Kenneth to cope with a situation like this I say it's a, multi, it's, a, it's a combination of things recording music has helped a lot I made a song called Grief Counseling a week after he passed and then the day he passed I made the beat to it so you haven't recorded it yet? Recorded it. You did? Okay, so we'll play it on the show. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll introduce it in just a second. So what, how did, and grief counseling, that, the way you are getting through it is by music, yeah? By, yeah, by doing music. And a lot of times, really freestyling. Because I have a routine where I freestyle for an hour, write for an hour, mix for an hour, make a beat for an hour. And I try to make the most out of that hour freestyling and just spit it all out, just let it all go and just turn it into whatever it is, and then just, just leave it all in the music. Go play basketball, go work out, lift weights. I think lifting weights has really, really helped a lot. Oh, my word. Yeah. Because it's, it's a... It, it's, yeah. it could go either way, though. Yeah. Because I can't wear nothing now. None of my pants fit. I'm just being real. Like, that was my... That's been my... And when mom got ill, you know I like to work out anyway. Yeah. And I started lifting heavier and heavier, and not no clothes fit. Like nothing fits, so it it does have a double edged sword. I can tell you from experience. Be ye also careful, unless you want to go to the tailor every week. Be careful. Uh, well, what I'm lifting and what you're lifting are two <laughs> different. I'm not lifting a lot. I'm just playing basketball and just chilling. Um, like I'm not. I'm not. I can't lift that much. But I. But what I do is a good enough workout for me. For you, for you. I'm like 165. So what I lift is gonna be different than what you lift, you know. Man, I but I'm supposed to be 165. I'm like 238, and it's because I, I think that's you know there are worse things to be addicted to than lifting weights. You know what of I mean? Of course. Yeah, I, I was of like, course, you know, what, yeah. I'm okay with my little my weird addiction. Yeah. I like to run. I, I like to you know I want to call it running away from the problems. But I like to run. The wind hits your face. Yeah. Running. You, it's so much you're thinking about, but you're just looking for it. And me, I like to run. I like to keep my mind busy, but it's to the point sometimes where you you can't keep keeping your mind busy because you know your mind it drifts, it wanders. Yeah. And when your mind starts to wander, that's when it grabs you. And if you let it grab you in the wrong place, it's going to take you, and you're going to have to deal with it in that moment. You know, one of the things that I've began to recognize and realize for sure is that. You know, and, and this isn't, I guess, kind of leading into our next kind of topic of conversation. People don't know what to say. People do not know what to say during grief. Um, so first things first, I'm going to say on the on the end of, and, and I, I can't coach you through it because all of us are going through this kind of at the same time. So first things first, we don't know how to get through this at all. We kind of like leaning on each other. But the second part of that is, Every every person's experience is going to be different. So I may be able to find one way to get through it. It may take you another way. And and who knows? You know, it's funny. Um, and Josh, I think I told you this. Kenneth, I found out. And I'm, Miles Grant. Miles, who was our other guest on the show, I found out he's my cousin. And you don't find this out. I mean, it's so weird. Like, you don't find stuff out until funerals and weddings, too. But, you know, funerals. So anyway, here's the 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 thing that I've discovered. So if you put a hole in a fence, this is, and I've had to try to work my way through this mentally. If I put a hole in a fence, right? Even if I go back and patch up the hole and put a patch there, a wood patch or wood glue or any of those things there, it may patch it, but the hole's still there. 
And I may, may make it look really good and I may sand it down, but at the end of the day, the hole remains. And I find this process is the same way. Like people try to get there and become the spackle or paste or whatever to cover the hole. But what I'm learning is that I don't want to cover the hole because there's no way I can cover the hole that was my mother. That will always be a void in my life. My job now, and for your and for you, your uncle and your father, my job is to find ways to understand the void, to learn lessons from it, and as you said earlier, coping, to find ways to deal with it. So I will people say, Oh, it'll in in time you'll stop grieving. That's not true. You never stop. You never, you never stop. stop. I will grieve stop. always. But the difference is I don't have to be in grief. I will grieve for the loss of my best friend, my mother. I will grieve for the fact that she won't see my children um, physically on this plane. I will grieve for the fact that there are accomplishments that when I get my Academy Award or when I go to top the New York Times bestseller list or any of those other things that I will do because that power, you remember that power. I, I will do those things, but I won't be able to share with her in them physically. So for that, I grieve. But I don't have to be in grief. It doesn't have to consume me or hold me or keep me bound because what I know for sure is that love liberates. And if I love her like I say I do, and if she loves me like I know she did and does, then the love she has for me is even more fiercely protective on the other side. But let's go back to what people say. What are some of the strange things people have said to you um, that during this process? Because people say stuff and you're like, did you just say that to me? What are some of the things that people have said? I don't want to start. You can start. <laughs> <laughs> that bad, huh? We might have to take a commercial. We might have to take a commercial break for this. Is one. that bad? Is I, that? <laughs> I got to think of something that's weird. I mean, everybody says the same thing. Like in my situation, like just be strong for your mama. Um, you know, uh, make them proud. You know, that's not really weird stuff to say. Though. To me, it is though. Like, make I mean, them proud. no, be strong for your mama. You got to be strong for yourself. Exactly. I need to be strong for me. Yeah. Yeah, That's what most people... And it was like at least 100. Because my dad was was well known. Very well known. Because he pretty much started drug court in Jacksonville. Yeah. I wouldn't say started, but he basically started. Was working there for a long time. Yeah. 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 He... he, Like, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have other drug courts in different counties and different states. He helped to set them up. Yeah. Yeah. So, the... Like... He's he was kind of famous in a way, in a sense, locally, but he was low key, so he wasn't like rapper famous. So everybody and their mama was saying the same exact thing over and over. Oh, the worst thing that anybody could really say is, "I'm here if you need me." Where was you before this happened? Because you've been had my number, and they all come and love on you. Hey, I'm okay with I'm here, like not if you just I'm here. Like if somebody reaches out, and let's, let's say I hadn't talked to you in a long time, right? And let's say somebody says, I'm here. I'm cool with that for me. Now, that works for me. What I wasn't cool with is some, someone, would, like I've had this happen this week, right? A few days ago, someone said, um, are you okay? And, you know, I responded, absolutely not. No, I'm not okay. That's the worst one. I'm a mess. I'm I'm not in a good space right now. And so guess what their follow-up response was? What's wrong? And I responded by saying, my mama did. I said it just like that. And the person was like, oh, well, you ain't have to make me feel bad. And then they wanted to flip it on me saying I made them feel bad. I can't tell you the amount of that kind of thing that, that goes on. And so I'm in the process of, besides I'm finishing, my mother was working on a book before she made her transition. So I'm going to finish her book. But that's another book that I'm really working on. I started making notes and outlining what the book would look like. But it's like, what to say during death? I say the worst thing said to me was, um, my uncle was in Ohio. And it was very cold in Ohio, which yeah. is why we weren't allowed to fly in because of the, the run. It was just too, or drive. Too icy, yeah. It was just too much. And yeah. My aunt, when she put her foot down, it's not happening. It don't matter who, no matter who you are. When she put her foot down, it's not happening. So, somebody said to me was, um, "Well, I'm not gonna go up there because you know, I love I love McKinley, but I'm not trying to end up like McKinley. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> and, wow. and in my head, I had to remain like, because it was it was a church. It was somebody from church, and I had to remain like." 
know this. Take a deep breath. Blank, blank, blank. Yeah. Just say this to me. Yeah. But I'm just like, you know what? Let me just... Okay. And I kind of just played it off, and I just kind of kept going. But I'm like, did you say that to me? Like, did, And I had to sit there and process. I'm like, did you really just say that to me? And even with, even with everything with you, like, I remember when I called you. And I called you because it was something for the school. I'm like, hey... To Johnson, hey, are you in your office? Like, no, I'm not. I'm like, hey, I just need this thing real quick. He says, well, hey, I'm on another line with the undertaker. I'm just like, and after that, I heard it, and I'm just like, my heart broke. And I'm just like, Jesus. yeah, you didn't know, yeah, because I was literally on the phone with the undertaker when you called me, and like when you told me, and you yeah. told me so like, because I was in business mode, right? And you told me so that I'm just like, Jesus, my heart just broke, and I'm just like. Cause I didn't have. I'm an only child, so I didn't have time to like be like, "Mama, dear, oh Lord." I literally right. had to and just like, I had, do it all. I didn't have any words. I didn't have any. I'm just like. But you were here, like you always been, like my little brother. You always like, been. I, I, I couldn't say anything. I'm just like I can't. And it's like just hearing you say, "I'm on the line with the Undertaker." I'm just like, yeah. yeah. What do you say to? It's like what do you say to that? That's like. The biggest question. Was I'm like, here. I just needed. That's for me, Josh. I just, I just, and even today, I just need to know that because no one will love you like your mother or your father, and in your case, your uncle. No one will have the fierce love. But I needed to know that someone at least pretends to have my back, right? Like I know that my mom has had whatever you want to say about it, my back. And that's what I just needed to hear. And a lot of that was, as you, like, they would say just the most weirdest and sensitive things. And here's the thing. I got to show you guys this, and I'll, I'll put it online, and we'll take a... Actually, you know what? I'm going to tell you what my mom did. My mom spoke to me after she died. Um, you guys don't know this, but mom spoke to me. And I'm going to tell you what she said in just a moment. But first, uh, Miles Grant, tell us about your, uh, tell us about this track. Um, anybody help you produce it, or is it all you? All me. Mix, master, produce. I, mean, I didn't write anything. I just freestyled. So this is a freestyle track, and you did it a week after your dad died. The Friday, yeah. I think I made something else that day, too. So this I is before the funeral. Remember. This was, well, the funeral, well, the funeral was actually, like, the day after your mom passed. Yeah. So it was like five days. Because like, I was coming to your dad's funeral, and at the point, yeah. I was like, I, I called you to tell I I can't do that. I was not feeling it that day at all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was a, it was other, it's like, what's crazy about this other stuff that happens that's going on while it, it's, it seems like it's a million things that happen to you at one time. Yeah. It's like a wave of just stuff. adversity. Yeah. You know, but the song, the song is called Grief Counseling. And if you've ever heard the intro to Friday Night Lights by J. Cole, it's the same sample. From there, I just put uh, 808 and some more modern drums on there. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to it as much as I did creating it. All right, here it Thank is y'all. by Miles Grant, Grief Counseling on the Rockman Experience. We'll be right back. Yo. Needing some grief counseling, never some brief counseling. There's something that you get through, something that I'm gonna live through. I'm trying to be myself and dead. I know that you ain't here no more. I ain't feeling there no more, cause one day, man, I gotta die. I hope it ain't no homicide. I hope it ain't no accident, no incident. Report that took so long to come out. It's just a paragraph, but I cannot believe it, man. I'm driving by your death post where you had died from that accident in a coma. Man, smelling the death type of aroma. I saw you take your last breath. You saw me take my first step. I saw you take your last step. I really saw the worst step. I know that it's gonna hurt next. All of my family hurting and burning, but I'm just hurting and learning. And I'm still going to class. I got my classmates that be mad about some stuff that they passed. I'm 93s, I got an 81. I'm trying to make it up. I'm trying to get my grades right, but they won't help me out midterms as soon as I come back. To the point that I just be shooting me, but I bust back. And I be wrong for it, strong for it. I prolong and make a song for it. Let my life and lift my muscles and just be strong for it. Pass the baton, I'm feeling so crisp, Paul, for it. I give all for it, but this is all for me. I'm so new to this, really trying to be true to this. And like, be the bully, it's nothing that you can do to it. And it don't wait for ya, and it don't pray for ya. But it's a man of his words, got a day for ya. Clock with the time, got a date for ya. Matter of fact, got some grief with a cake for ya. 
just can't have my cake, can't eat it too Can't sin a lot and win a lot, I keep my faith in Jesus too Praying I be angry, I be crazy, got a reason to Man, I lost my daddy to some bull, this ain't even cool No Chicago bull, Dennis Rodman, fit, fit, feel insane, still insane Kill the game, feel the flame, J.R. Smith, hopping up Popping up, dropping three, stopping ya. Yeah. This ain't no vision, like this is a lag. Like through the hands and he caught him in trap. Amazing song, dude. You did that. Appreciate that. Yeah, nice work. Nice work. Yes, sir. Well, all right, so I did tell you, and I'm gonna share. Um, you know, I'm a poet. Like, I'm no rapper like you, although I can freestyle a little bit. I know, I've heard you. I heard you. I co sign it. I co sign it. I do my little I, thing, I, 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 but I'm a poet. Yeah. And so for me, the last couple of weeks have been crazy. Mom passed. Well, first, your uncle passed. That was number one of the year, right? And and everybody was, like, freaking out because no one – it was, like, sudden. Even though he had been ill, it was like, oh, he's going to be fine. Same thing with my mom. It was like, oh – and I just knew my mom was fine. So mom passed right after your uncle, a couple – like a month or two later. Then – well, Kenneth's dad was next. Then my mom. Then my mom had a good friend. His name was Dennis Stewart, known as Mr. Natural. He was a natural, and they were really good friends. And he was like, he had been diagnosed with colon cancer. And he was like giving her natural ways and foods and stuff to eat. And they were like sharing tips and tricks. He then passed right after her. Then um, one of our dear, dear friends, your new fraternity brother, I mean, you're new to the frat, but a great friend of mine for 25 years, Eric Daniel Johnson. Um, had a massive heart attack and passed away. Then um, there was another guy that I went to junior high school and high school with, um, who was the offensive line coach at Edward Waters College, uh, Glenn Chapman. He passed away, and I his, his, his words. But the coach said his words were on the field. Were, hand me my pump. Okay, that didn't work. Call nine one one. Tell my mom and tell my family I love them. And I'm, I'm like, so for you to be telling, for you to be saying those words is that you knew he knew something was coming. It was it was big. It's like you knew, like the pump didn't work. All right, call nine one one. Maybe they can get here. But you just doing the math in your head. I know what's gonna happen. You call nine one one. You place a call. You get put on the brief hold. Then they gotta come out. Tell my mom. Tell my family I love them. Cause you knew nobody. They weren't gonna be able to get there in time. So. Yeah. And, Glenn, and, you know, in that thing, too, I reflect on the fact that Glenn was playing football. Glenn loved – I've been knowing him since we were, like, 11 or 12. Glenn loved playing football. And I take solace in the fact, even though it's painful for me, because um, I used to tease him about being an Omega. He would tease me about being a Kappa. Um, I take solace, though, in the fact that he died doing what he loved. He was doing exactly what he loved when he passed away. So – um, Glenn, and then this morning, there's another guy who's a professor at Alabama State who um, they, it was a major car accident. They found him in the car, and he had been there a couple of days. And for me, I'm looking all around with all of this stuff happening that I'm kind of around. Obviously, my mother is the biggest thing in my life, but I see it in so many ways, and I'm like, God, what are you trying to tell me? You know, and I don't know. It may not be a lesson. Maybe not. There's always a lesson, but... I had to make sure, like, um, it, it, it it. I will say, all of this around me has made me even more spiritually aware. You know, it's not that I don't pray, but I pray differently now. I think I'm a little more in tune. Um, I'm, I, I grab the hem of the garment just a little bit tighter. And I don't know about you, but it, those are the things that kind of elicit, you know, change. So, um so I got to tell you this, and I don't know about you. Have you guys had an experience where they spoke to you, have spoken to you since they've been gone? You said your dad visited you to let you know it was all good. He's 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 talked to me about five or six times, but most of the time where it was in dreams. Yeah, that's where it happens. Yeah, and, and it's weird. But, it, it, I mean, with the relationship we had, I guess that's just... Yeah. He needed to... I believe that he's with me twenty four seven. It's just up to me to to listen to him, to get in a small still space where you can and receive. Yeah, yeah, and that's where my peace would probably come from yeah. in the situation because I know that all of his attributes and all of his qualities just kind of just pour right into me immediately. It, as soon as he got really in an accident and the coma. What's crazy is I had just finished editing the David Banner interview 
right at right before he got in an accident. Because we, I just left you yeah. the night before. We David Banner came to campus, EWC. You sat down, had a one on one exclusive interview with David Banner, mm-hmm. and uh, that was the night before. That was a couple days before. That was the David Banner interview was huh. was exactly a week before he week got before. an accident. Okay. okay, and then I edited the video because I remember I looked at it, something you sent and you had me change it and and frame it and frame it a little different. Okay. And then I was, it took me a long time to do it because it was a still shot. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to go home and chill. And on the right, when I go, I go uh, on 8th Street because I stay on the north side. So I go 95 North and 95 South was blocked off. There was a police officer over there. And it was like people that somebody got pulled over over here and then somebody got pulled over on murder. On the other side. Yeah. And I was like, it's a lot going on. And then. The the highway was blocked off from that same accident that he got in, but I didn't find that out until later on that night. So it was just like, it, and it was it was a lot of crazy stuff that was just going on at the time. So I guess he's just trying to just navigate me and steer me through it in his own way. Because the, you know? I, you know, Oprah said it. I put it on my Instagram. I think you saw, saw it. it. Remember, yeah. she said if they mothered you or fathered you or parented you over here, when they get over there and they don't have to worry about. Flying to where you are, like trying to book a flight, and they just be like, "Let me help." They're gonna love you even more that capacity because their spirit now, and it's hard because for me, I've known this person in this form for a long time, so the adjustment is really mine to make, right? To adjust with my mother in this case being in a different form. Um, What about you? Have you heard from your uncle? Um, For me, I will say. my aunt, she told me at a young age, because my mother, she passed away in 97. So she told me at a young age, she was like, you know, your mother's going to visit you, but she's not going to visit you until you're spiritually ready. Mm. And she was like... Aunt Dorothy. Not another, that, aunt. Not, another aunt. Another aunt. Was, okay. my, my mom's sister, actually. Okay, okay. And she told me, she was like, it has nothing to do. She said, you may have a great relationship with God, but until you're spiritually ready, because you know you may not be ready for that. Your spirit may not be ready for that, because you may not know how to react to that. And, you know, and I talked to my aunt about it now. I talked to my dad about it now. He said, it's something you have to be spiritually ready for. Yeah. And he was like, you can have the best relationship with God, but it's still something you have to be spiritually ready for, because it's, it's a spirit-to-spirit connection. And if you're not ready for it, they're going to know that. And the last thing they want to do is spook you or scare you. So it's one of those things where you have to be open and you have to be okay with them coming. Like, I get science here and there, but I guess this isn't a dream. It's it's something I haven't experienced yet. And, you know, I always ask myself, well, what's wrong with me? Am I not? <laughs> like, am I am I not? Am I not praying hard enough? Am I, am I not listening hard enough? And I, and I listen to the signs. I get signs here and there. But it's like, what am I missing? So that's a question I'm still trying to answer to this day. And I'm like, what are, what am I doing wrong? Or if I'm not doing anything wrong, what do I need to do right? So, And it's not like you're, I, honestly, I don't think you're missing anything per se. I think more than likely, it just has to be the right time. And I think that's what happens. Like quite often, it's just not the right time. And so we end up in great spaces. It's just we aren't ready for it to come to us in this way at this time. And I think when we get to that space and we can get there at the, in that time, it, it just opens up the door for us, right? We're able to be in a better, better space for ourselves and for the people around us. You know what I mean? So it's just got to be at that time. Um, for me, I'm going to share a couple things with you. One, I wrote a poem. Um, you guys know I'm a poet, like I said. And so I wrote this poem, and um, it's inspired me. I, this was not supposed to be a poem. You ever wrote something on Facebook, and you're like, I just need to get this out, and I'm going to write it on Facebook? And it ended up being a poem. Um, and this one says, uh, if I knew I, uh, I didn't have much time. Um, if I knew I didn't have much time, I'd, I'd have found a brighter way to shine a more exclusive way to be so that you'd be proud of me if I knew I didn't have much time. If I'd known I'd, if I'd known it'd be so quick, I'd never gotten sick, so only smiles would light our way as we enjoyed both night and day if I knew I didn't have much time. If I'd have thought you'd leave this space taking all your style and grace, I'd have tried to learn even more before you entered heaven's door if I knew I didn't have much time. 
However, what I knew not made me wise. For my bliss, it made me blind to the possibility of today. So I loved you fiercely evermore. I believe I brought honor to your door. I treasured each moment of dark and light. I learned from your tenacity, your strength, your might. Yes, the time was short, but I'd do it all the same. For what some see as loss for me is glorious gain. The grand love you had for me here is greater and boundless over there. So, no, we didn't have much time. That time I'll cherish yours and mine. And now I see <laughs> it was just enough time. Simply divine. So that was the poem, one of the poems that was on the back of the funeral program, right? Which, like I said, I was, you know, I'm sure you guys, this is me. Mom and I were, like, together forever. That's my little baby pic with mom. She, Aww. she's, like, you know. That's, when he was nice. <laughs> all right. <laughs> when, when my lips were small. But let me tell you this. So here's the interesting thing. Josh, when they do come, it's almost like, you know, all of us have grown up in the church. You know that old saying, he may not come where you want him, when you want him, but he's always right on time. I think our parents the same way. My mom visited me right after to let me know that she left as an answer to God's prayer. Uh, And my prayer to God, excuse me, because I kept praying, God, do not let my mother suffer. And I never asked God for anything. I just didn't want my mom to suffer. And my mom let me know that if I had stayed, I'd be suffering. So I had to release her. And then plus her work here was done. She, if you look at all of her accomplishments and all the things, she'd done a lot, sat on boards, raised money, done all that wonderful stuff. But if she were still here, one, she'd be suffering. But two, I would be so focused on trying to alleviate her suffering that I couldn't do the work that I'm supposed to do. So sometimes folk got to go so that you can grow. And that's a hard pill to swallow, but it's real. So I get to the post office the other day, and y'all know I like my bags, my different, you know, briefcases and unique, strange stuff. Mom knew I liked it, too. So I get to the post office, and this bag, and it's a canvas and leather bag with a compass on the front that was in the post office, right? So I'm like, I wonder what this bag comes from. So I look, and my initials are carved into the bag. It was monogrammed, my initials. And I flip over on the other side, and I see an inscription. And the inscription says, my son, wherever life takes you, you will always make me proud. That was in the mail in my post office box last week, which is at the same time all these other deaths were happening. And it was almost, and first of all, they had to leave me out of the post office. You know, I was, that was a wreck. But it was a reminder that even though, and honestly, she must have ordered it before. But even though, even through all of that, She's still here. She's still here. And just like air, you know, we don't see air, but we breathe it. We know it's there. And we have faith that we're going to be able to breathe. So I have faith that God is not going to let anything happen to me that I can't deal with. And that my mom may not be here physically, but she's celebrating in grand style over there. Yeah. Yeah. Great show, guys. Great show. By the way, um, Someone heard the poem, because I did the poem, you know, some people, and uh, I'm in the process of publishing a book. I I was working on a couple other books. I'm in the process of doing this book of poetry, and um, I'm looking forward to releasing that in the summer this year. And um, so graciously, my new cousin, (laughs) Miles Grant, has helped to, uh, uh, is going to agree to help me with some tracks so we can have music accompanying it. So the beauty of this is, and through all of our shared experiences, we got each other. I thought I was like, Lord, please don't let me cry in this show. And But if I got to cry, it's okay. I don't care, y'all. You know, if I got to cry, I got to cry. Um, but the beauty is that we've, even though this our bond was sealed by death, um, just like on the earth, through death comes life. And so now we are brothers in ways that not only can we support each other and lead us to our best good, but now it's important for us to support other people and show them that death doesn't have to be the end or so bad. It can be a beginning of finding ways to celebrate life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for being on the show. Any final words? 
I know it's a hard one. It's a tough show. And I think we got through it without too much uh, craziness. <laughs> yeah, definitely. My final words is just for anybody else that's listening to this. Um, just take stuff one day at a time. If you want a good verse to help you with that, it's Matthew 6.34, and I'll put it in my own words. Tomorrow will take care of itself. There's enough problems in today of its own. And just keep that in mind. No matter what you're going through right now, you're probably going through it to help somebody else. And that's all I got to say. Man, y'all so smart. I'm glad I got smart friends like y'all. Boy, look at here. How do you, Miles? 22. Miles is 22. My God. Okay. Um, <sighs> wow. The best advice I will say is grief. Grief. Don't. Don't let it build up because mm. it can block you from achieving so it can block you from achieving from so much more. So don't be afraid to grieve. Yeah. Talk to someone. Be there be there for your loved ones, but most importantly, be there for yourself. Make sure that you are okay so you can be better for the next day. Yeah. Because you have to you have to be good with yourself before you can be good for everybody else. Yeah. So, those are my words. Man, thank you, Miles Grant, um, Joshua Young. You guys are superstars in my book. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to navigate this thing, but I know that, um, yeah, we're going to get through it. We don't have a choice. <laughs> we don't have a choice. All right, well, that ends another show, uh, The Rockman Experience. Thank you guys for being a part of the experience. Remember... Now, you can always find all the details at RockmanJohnson.com. Follow me. Follow me, RockmanJohnson.com. Miles, you want to shout out your IG? I know you got music, brand new music there. Yes, sir. It's, my IG is W-H-O-S-M-I-L-E-S-G-R-A-N-T. Who is Miles Grant? Well, who's Miles Grant? I'm sorry. Excuse me. Who's Miles Grant? W. <laughs> <laughs> So that's W H O S M I L E S G R A N T. Cool. We will follow you for new music. Um, Josh, you want to shout out your well, you're EWC. www.ewc.edu, where you're the SGA president. You're doing big stuff. We're looking for big things from you, and we can go in there and see you uh, do the Alpha Hop, maybe somewhere on okay. some social I'm media sorry. platform. Al- Alpha Stone Hop. What do they do? I'm sorry, Alpha Stone Hop. Please don't, don't. Don't, I'm sorry, the, don't, the do alpha, don't do Alpha Phi Alpha. The Alpha Skip? Like what are you skip? I'm sorry. Do you bob or weave? What? <laughs> but we, we man, I, I just appreciate you guys. And you can also catch more details uh, about the Rockman experience at rockmanjohnson.com. That's R-A-H-M-A-N Johnson.com. Or hit me on Facebook at Rockman J or Rockman J fans on Facebook at Rockman J on Twitter at Rockman J on Instagram. All of those things, we want to see you. And, uh, yeah, reach out. Let me know what's going on in your world and what you want to hear on the show. But I do appreciate you. Thank you again for the new intro and outro. It's good stuff. Yes, sir. We're going to be like you when we grow up and learn how to flow. Um, I'm jumping on you on, jumping with you on the next track that you do. Cool? All right. All right. Until next time, remember, don't let anybody take you to a place that you don't want to go. You have the power to create amazing. So use it. We'll see you next time as the Rockland Experience continues. M I N S G R A T. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Anthem. No, this ain't a game plugging Madden. Got the daily news with the habit. Couple interviews, a couple things we asking. And experience the greatest teacher. As you experience the greatest teacher A living testimony, really, truly make it deeper. And life a pretty penny, not as pretty when it's cheaper. This is for the culture, never trying to get over I know this world is getting colder I ain't come here to roast you, so it's what I told you Rockman experience, Johnson experience Oh man, you curious, breaking new is serious But we still laugh and smile, got them bad laughing now Moving from the left to the right like speakers panning now Rockman experience, Johnson experience Oh man, you curious, breaking new is serious But we still laugh and smile, got them bad laughing now Moving from the left to the right like speakers panning now I can't do it for the vine, I just do it for the podcast I stay connected without Comcast I make them stay like it's on task I make them stay like it's on task Keep going, keep rolling with it So many episodes and I let them know A lot, a lot of things they ain't never know But we gon' take our time with forever glow This the Rockman experience Jackson experience Ah, uh, man, you curious Ah, uh, man, they mad 
yeah, they furious. Ah, uh, man, they mad. Ha, ha, cause they furious. Keep on rolling. Keep on going. Uh, go coast to coast. Cause we keep on coasting. In my yuggy, yes. Uh, G-R-A-N-T. Uh, got these flows. And I smooth like lotion. Uh, move with the groove. And I move with the tune. And vibe with the wave. And I'm still showing praise. Got first, family, second. But tune in. Tune in. Go ahead and we gon' do this. Do this. Men experience. Johnson experience. Oh, man, you curious. Breaking new with serious. But we still laughing. Smile. Got them bad laughing now. Moving from the left to the right. Like speakers panning now. Rock. Men experience, chops and experience. Oh, man, you curious? Breaking news, serious. But we still got to smile, got them bad laughing now. Moving from the left to the right, like speakers panning out. Panning out.